Section 12.5 is called Tangent and Normal Vectors. And what I want you to sort of imagine is that, um, or, or become aware of, is that so far all of our vectors that we've been working with have been in terms of the standard unit, standard unit basis vectors i, j, and k. And sometimes there are other choices that are more convenient to use. For example, imagine um, for an aircraft in flight, um, a better frame of reference for how that aircraft is moving would be in reference to the, the vector upon which it's actually moving instead of the ijk vector um, that we've been using. So we're going to kind of um, start with that premise and take a look at a definition um, that's going to help us as we're taking um, a look through this section. This is definition 5.1 um, and it's talking about the principal normal vector. So we're going to call this capital N of T, and this is the unit vector having the same direction as t prime of t and defined by n of t is t prime of t divided by the magnitude of t prime of t. And of course this is provided t prime of t is not zero. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to actually find one of these guys. <clears throat> so my directions are just that, to find the unit tangent and principal unit normal. Let's read that. Principal unit normal. And vectors at the given point. And our vector valued function we're working with is r of t equals 2 cosine t 3 sine t. And we're going to do this one at t equals 0. Now you might notice right here the 2 cosine t and the 3 sine t would be much nicer if they had the same coefficient. That the same coefficient would be a circle and this as you know is an ellipse. Um, which means that uh, when we find magnitude and things like that they don't all simplify and turn into just constants. Um, we actually end up with some pieces that are not constant because we're working with an ellipse. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find a derivative, r prime of t. And of course, r prime of t is negative 2 sine t, 3 cosine t. And the magnitude of r prime of t, which this is where I was talking about would be really nice if they have the same coefficient, and of course they're not. This will be the square root of 4 sine squared t plus 9 cosine squared t. Um, but do notice that you could take this 9 cosine squared t and break it apart into 4 sine, uh, 4 and 5 of these. <coughs> So, like 4 cosine squared t, and then um, 5 cosine squared t. The reason, of course, that's nice is because these two combined are a constant. Um, they're equal to the value of 1, and then times the multiple of 4 in front of them. So those two pieces actually are, are the value 4. And then we've got plus the 5 cosine squared from the other piece still there. So our t 
of t vector is actually the r prime components each over this magnitude of r prime. So you have negative 2 sine of t over the square root of 4 plus 5 cosine squared t. And then we have 3 cosine t over the square root of 4 plus 5 cosine squared t. All right, so t of 0, which is the standard, um, the uh, unit tangent vector, evaluated at the point 0. Um, so the first component is going to be a 0, because the sine of 0 is 0, so we get a 0 in the numerator. The other component is going to have a, a 3 on top, because the cosine of 0 is actually 1. On bottom, I'm going to get this, the cosine of 0 being 1 is going to give me the 5 here plus this 4, which will be the square root of 9. So then, of course, the square root of 9 is actually 3. So this vector ends up being the vector 0, 1. Awfully nice. A lot of work to get to 0, 1, though. Um, even more work, however, is going to be that standard normal vector, or principal unit normal vector, excuse me, that I were talking about before. Um, because if you'll take a look back here, what it says I need to do is I need to do the derivative of t prime of t, which means which means I actually need to take the derivative of this, which is, as you can see, uh, not very friendly. I've got con uh, quotient rules. I've got a chain rule in there. Uh, it's just downright messy. So we are going to take the derivative of that, however. So as we take the derivative of that piece, the t prime of t, this is going to take me probably a couple of lines to write out. I need the denominator which is 4 plus 5 cosine square root of t times the derivative of the numerator, which is negative <coughs> 2 cosine t minus, now we're going to do the numerator, which is negative 2 sine t times the derivative of the denominator, which is the messy piece, um, because it is a chain rule. So we have a 1 half. We'll rewrite everything to the new power of negative 1 half. So 4 plus 5 cosine squared t to the negative 1 half. And then you need to multiply by the derivative of the inside and the derivative of the inside. Um, it's, it's a chain rule, again, because you've got cosine squared. Um, so the derivative of 4, of course, is 0, and the derivative of 5, um, the coefficient of 5, will be there. And then the derivative of cosine squared, the 2 will come down, so I'm going to get 10. Let me see if I can give myself just a little bit more space to get this written out here. We may have enough space, we'll see. Okay, so I've got the 10, and then I'm going to have cosine technically to the 1 power, and the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so here's the negative at the beginning, and then I'm going to have sine of t at the end. And all of this is over the, this is just the first half. <laughs> This is over the denominator squared. Um, oh, that should have been a plus right there, because, no, nope, minus, because we're dealing with a quotient rule, that's right. Over the denominator squared, and so the denominator was the square root piece, um, so that'll just cancel out. So we've got 4 plus 5 cosine squared of t. Um, that is our first piece. It is our first coordinate of our unit vector, or of our vector here. The other piece is very similar. <coughs> because it's a very similar kind of function, the only thing that's different is the numerator. So I'm going to have the square root of 4 plus 5 cosine squared t. I need times the derivative of the numerator, which in this one is actually negative 3 sine of t. And then I've got minus the numerator, which is the 3 cosine t. times the derivative of the denominator, so I'm going to get another 1 half. I'm going to get another 4 plus 5 cosine squared t. This is to the negative 1 half again. Did I get that one above? Yeah, I did. And then the derivative of the inside is exactly the same because it is the same inside function, so it's negative 10 cosine of t sine of t. All over the same denominator as the other piece. 
Now, you might be tempted to start cleaning this up a little bit, and of course you can if you'd like, um, but the reality is we really only care about what happens at the particular point zero that we're working with. So I'm far more inclined to actually start evaluating as soon as I can to get rid of a lot of the pieces of information um, by plugging in the number zero. For example, just like on the piece of this problem before, underneath the radical when I put in, plug in the zero, cosine squared of zero is one, and then I've got that times the five, so I get five plus my four is nine, so this is actually the number three. So this piece right here actually is just the same value as the value three. Um, the next piece says negative two cosine of zero, so that would just be negative two because the cosine of zero is one. I've got minus a negative here, so that's plus. <clears throat> now, here's the deal, is that the sine of zero is zero. So I don't actually get anything from the second piece. And the denominator should be the nine because I've got cosine squared, which would be one times my five, five plus my four is my nine. So this is actually three over nine. Now we're gonna do the same thing with the other piece. The other piece is actually a little bit easier though even than that because I've got a sine of t here. And when I plug in zero, this is gonna be a zero. And then over here, it's all multiplication on the second piece, and I've also got another sine of t zero here, so when I plug in zero, I get zero. So the second piece is actually just going to be a big old whopping zero. So I end up getting, for t prime of zero, I get negative six over nine, or negative two thirds, zero. So obviously the magnitude of t prime of zero is two-thirds. So my standard normal, my principal unit normal vector is going to be um, my vector negative two-thirds zero divided by two-thirds, which of course that's only going to happen when I have one of the components equal to zero. But this gives me negative one zero for my principal unit normal vector. All right, now, to get a third vector that's orthogonal, both to t of t and n of t, um, we can actually define what's called a binormal vector, b of t. So that's what we're going to do next. This is definition 5.2. The binormal vector b of t. is t of t cross product with n of t. And this, um, obviously in a problem like this, means that you're going to often need to find the t of t and the n of t first before you can take the cross product. So it's a lot like the last problem we did, um, but you're just going to do something with that information a step further. So let's take a look at example number two, which is the following. Find the binormal, bi binormal, binormal vector at t equal one. All right, so my R of t equations is example number two. R of t is equal to t, two t, T squared. All right, so we'll go down the same trail we did last time. The derivative of this would be 1, 2, 2t. And if we take this component, 